You tweeted about Jordan Bennington being bad. I did. Yeah, all right, and then he got good. He did. So what, is the Dangle Jigs back? Oh, honey, it never left. Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What? Knock, nice! There's a giant head! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Half win, tie, whatever you want to call it, and then lose in the shootout 6-5 to the St. Louis Blues. You know, the new year is all about new beginnings. It's about telling yourself you're going to keep up with your health and go to the gym to varying degrees of success. And it's about people who regularly go to the gym rudely not accepting you because they're jerks. You do not own Good Life Fitness, sir or madam! It is about saying corny things like, new year, new me. And I hope that this game was not an indication of what the Leafs plan to be in 2023 because this is New Year old me. Because there were a lot of elements of the old Leafs in this one and we'll talk about that. Real quick, think you know which way it's gonna go? I didn't at any point during this game. You can make your bet at Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. So. In light of the Leafs losing their first game of 2023, I want to acknowledge a few things. Number one, oh, oh, I don't know why I flinched. The sky is not falling. They have not blown a series lead to anyone. My dog has not broken my nose. 2023, you know, all things considered, it's not so bad so far. And furthermore, that was an exciting game. Like a gosh darn exciting game, if I could be so profane. That game went to the shootout and the Leafs were down by two Four different times in that game they said on the broadcast? How? I was watching and how? I was in the middle of watching, they said that and I said how? There a lot of fights! There was a lot of fights. In the third period, the Leafs were unquestionably the best team in this game. And hey, that's a pretty good period to be the best team in this game. So if I can acknowledge all of those things, we can acknowledge a few other things! Look at this! Look at all of this right here! It might look a little different than it has in the past. And in case you are a lapsed viewer, allow me to catch you up. Sorry there, Felix. Allow me to catch you up. This is the Steve Dangle YouTube channel. This is the 16th season where I've been talking about the Leafs after every single game. And I mean every single game. And I have missed games over the years, but it has been years since I have missed a game. The standard for me missing a game is someone has to die. I am not kidding when I say I take this very seriously and I take the team very seriously. You may have seen from time to time, the team causes me to lose my cool. I think we'll gently say lose my cool. I turn different shades of pink and red and orange and Gosh darn near purple, and I get rather upset when things don't go their way. Now, I also do pretty well and smile and laugh and make merry when they win. The reason I am going on this rant is Ilya Simpson have allowed a very bad goal on the first goal, and then they went down. Two nothing, and I tweeted this. This is why the Leafs drive me nuts. They're great, legitimately great. Did we all hear the part where I said they were legitimately great? Ah, ah, ah. I'll start again. This is why the Leafs drive me nuts. They're great, legitimately great. Top three in the league, which is a lie. Heading into this game, they were fourth. Oh no, they've plummeted from third to fourth. A middling team, which is what the St. Louis Blues are, comes into your building. They just lost two of their top guys, that being Tarasenko and O'Reilly. O'Reilly in particular eats the Leafs up. You're rested and they're caving you in 10-2 in shots and down 2 nothing. And the building's a morgue as a result. Brutal! And people had the nerve, the gall, the cheek, the utter cheek to say, hey, sometimes you're not gonna play the best game. Hey. It happens, man. Hey, calm down. Who do, you, who do you think you are coming into my house? And when you were on my YouTube channel, you were in my house telling me to calm down. First and foremost, let me ask you a question. Has that ever worked? Have you ever said, hey, just calm down? And they went, oh, you're right. Question is rhetorical. The answer is no. 
you know what? I hate to sound like an old, but we are about halfway through my 16th season making a video after every game talking about this team! This team! You know how many jerseys we have gone through just in the lifetime of this YouTube channel? I've been making YouTube videos about the Toronto Maple Leafs since I thought calling up Christian Hansen was the answer to winning the cup. Do you remember Matt Stajan being captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs? He never was, but he was to us for a time. So forgive me if sometimes on a Tuesday night when they have a tough start, I bring a little bit of baggage. This YouTube channel is more baggage than Pearson Airport. The Leafs won 11. 11 of their final 55 games of the 2014-15 season, the Horacek era, and I made a video after every single one of those! I talked about the quality of Ole Jokinen's play as a Leaf, hoping to up his trade value. A number of the Leafs players I have talked about over the years are now on television talking about the Leafs, the team they used to play on. So you know what? Yeah! When they fall back into some of their old habits, like not starting on time, and when I see a shaky goalie, yeah, I know he's been good, but I see a shaky goalie, I get a little jumpy! And what got my goat, I will not lie, my goat was gotten, was the idea that I'm not allowed to come to the parade. I am not allowed to enjoy the Stanley Cup parade when they eventually do hashtag the thing. You know what? You're not allowed to go. Not you, not you, not you. If you believe in this team, if you are a little bit hurt by the history of this team, if this team has ever hurt you, if this team has ever brought you joy, I am not talking about you. I am talking about the people who think it's weird to react to a bad start or a bad game. Imagine this is a pizzeria. You do not come in here and tell me how to make it a pizza. If you're a Leafs fan and you've never been upset at the Toronto Maple Leafs, you are not a Leafs fan. You are not allowed to go to the Stanley Cup parade. You wouldn't know what to do with it. You're just gonna be taking up space on Bay Street at that point because the hurt, the hurt that this team has brought us over the years is what will make, what will make, will, it's going to happen. Producer Drew, shut up, stop laughing. What it will happen, the pain is what will make the victory so much more sweet. I cut my ring finger with my other ring finger. <laughs> Don't get mad when your dog barks, it's a dog. Don't slam on your brakes every time you're driving through the countryside and a cow says moo. That's what cows say! And don't, under any circumstances, Tell me to calm down, you must be lost. Speaking of lost, the Leafs lost. This game, 6-5, in the shootout. We can go through it rapid fire. And you don't have to calm down, I hope you lose it. Because that'll make it so much better once you regain it. First goal, poor defensive coverage from the Toronto Maple Leafs on the power play. St. Louis, Brandon Saad charges down shorthanded and everyone was ranting and raving about the five-man power play. It didn't matter that Ilya Simsonov allowed a Fairly unforgivable goal. That's a bad goal. It's all about the five-man unit. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I really like the five-man unit. I don't like it very much, but I do think it's odd that they allowed a shorthanded goal and it's like, well, that's it! But then they score the game-tying goal to make it 5-5 and I didn't see a single person say, never mind. Then former Leaf, who was never Leaf, Braden Shen scores on the power play to make it 2-0. By the way, that's what you're supposed to do with the power play. And the Leafs are getting outshot 10-2 on home ice against a team that is newly and freshly injured. That's bad! But a few minutes later, just before the end of the first period, Pierre Engvall gets the Leafs on the board. That's good. Then the game jumps the shark. Jordan Cairo scores on the power play. Once again, that's what you're supposed to do with it. 3-1 Blues. That's the second two goalie. Minute and a half later, bunting to William Nylander who claps it like an Usher video. 3-2. About halfway through the second, halfway through regulation, Josh Levo gets one because Kelly Rosen got one last time. 4-2. That is now the Blues' third two goal lead of the game. Michael Bunting, who took an absolute beating in this game, gets on the board and I was very happy about that because I picked him up in fantasy this week. The Leafs play four games and he's on the top line. I'm very smart. Before Brandon Saad scores exactly a minute later to give the Blues the 5-3 lead. That is now their fourth two goal lead of the game. I cannot believe that stat is real. But under three minutes later, again, this game was a carnival. Austin Matthews scores a very Austin Matthews goal. He gives it to the crowd who gives it right back in the form of love. And the Leafs are within one once again. And I like that. They're losing the game, but he's still got swagger. Which brings us to the third period. Now, Blues fans, 
I gotta say something you're not gonna like. The first two penalties of this game went against the St. Louis Blues. And then the camera goes directly to Craig Berube's face. And at that moment I knew, all right, if the Leafs get another power play in this game, it'll be an absolute miracle. People act like motor mouths are the only ones who whine. The Michael Buntings of the world that think Sidney Crosby when he first entered the league. And you know what? They do whine. You know what? They're motor mouths and they do whine. But it's the stoic whiners that go under the radar unnoticed, underappreciated, and underscorned. Why did the St. Louis Blues win the Stanley Cup in 2019? I, I got a few answers for you. Ryan O'Reilly and that weird little stick was gosh darn heroic. Alex Petrangelo was one of the best defenders in the league. Jordan Bennington owned a calendar that said 2019 on it. And Craig Berube whined about officiating. Oh! Dude, what was the stat? They got eight penalties in the first two games, both of them. So when Robert Thomas took a high sticking penalty on Michael Bunting in the broadcast, somewhat rightfully pointed out the Bunting to the little head snap back, I thought, all right. To quote a very popular sound on TikTok, I'm not saying he deserved it, but the hockey god's timing is always right. No one in this game took a beating more than Michael Bunting, maybe Mitch Marner, maybe Mitch Marner, but Bunting was taking a beating all game. And I'm not saying he doesn't invite and or welcome that sort of thing, but he took a beating all night. He deserved to draw at least one in this game. Give him that one. Fine. Also, I don't know, maybe keep your stick down next time. Leafs get a power play and guess who buries it? Michael Bunting! Way to go, Scarborough! The building is losing at the roof! It, we need a new one. Three, two, one. The clock winds down. We are going to three on three overtime to give Everybody in the building, what they want! David Kemp, starting with Timothy Lilligren and TJ Brody, as they sh skated around for like 25 seconds. But the, okay, the Leafs are going for a line change now. They're going for one, and oh, the big boys are on the ice. Here come the big boys, and they're working it around, and they're working it around. It's gonna be so good when they're done working it around. The culmination of their hard work is gonna, it's gonna culminate in a goal and now, oh, the other big boys are on! It's Marner and Tavares! Wow! The Blues have been out there for a very long time. They'd be tired if they didn't have to basically not move at all. And, okay, now the big boys are off and the Blues have it. And it feels like the Leafs had to puck a lot and for some reason Samsonov is having to make all the big saves and... This is when I realized, you know what, three on three might be close to, not as bad, but close to as bad as the shootout because it is essentially line changing the musical. That three on three overtime is where fun, happiness, and dare I say hope go to die. You know what would have been better than that? Anything. Anything, absolutely anything. I could have been playing Red Dead Redemption. I could have marched up to Strawberry, gone west of there, gone to Lake Owangela with my varmint rifle, got a beaver pelt, and made some fancy moccasins. And then we go to the shootout where we had the third of the galaxy braining wise men. First one was the five man forward group on the power play. That is the first galaxy braining wise man, which I'm not even necessarily opposed to. I'm just saying it's galaxy brain. The second galaxy braining wise man is starting David Kampf and two defensemen in overtime. Again, a concept that I am not exactly against, but it's a bit strange. We all find it peculiar, even if we understand the theory. And then the third, Austin Matthews spectacular goal, Mitch Marner spectacular goal, and unfortunately, Samsonov can't come up with a save. So we go to sudden death. We go to the extra shooters, the fourth shooter, a defenseman. Now, as Kyle Cushman, who I should maybe just give him his own segment on this YouTube channel, but as he pointed out on Twitter after this game, Sandine is actually like super nasty in the shootout, like uh, in practice and all of that. I don't get, of all the things, I don't get super worked up about its choices in the shootout. The coaches legitimately know better than us. They do. Uh, unless they start using the same guy over and over again who uses the same move over and over again and he telegraphs it and the goalie reads it. This is Rasmus Sandin. Pretty much guaranteed the Blues didn't have the book on him and credit where credit's due. Jordan Bennington makes an incredible save. Sandin had him dead to rights. He doesn't score. The Blues do. Was it Braden Shen? Was it? It doesn't matter. And it doesn't even count towards the stats. On paper, the Blues scored and the Leafs drop a point. Now, after all of that, they tried a number of things. Simsonov gave the team a chance to win. He was good when he had to be in the third period. He was good when he had to be great when he had to be in overtime. Would it not have been better 
if that team, who you saw grossly outmatch the Blues in the back half of the game, wouldn't it have been better if that was the team you saw in the first, oh, I don't know, eight minutes? Sometimes you get it. No, 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 no. Sometimes you're going to have a bad shift, a bad back-to-back shifts, maybe even back-to-back-to-back shifts. I'm sorry, you're on home ice, you're getting outshot 10-2, you got scored on with the power play, and then their power play as a consistently, for well over a month now, a top five team in the National Hockey League. Excuse me for pointing out the fact that that's a little uncharacteristic. Good on the team for sticking with it. Everyone played their part in securing a point in the standings, a very important point in the standings, but wouldn't it have been better? What if the St. Louis Blues in early January 2019 were just like, ah, you know, sometimes you just finish last. You know, it's a big league and it's a good league and someone's got to finish last, so we'll just finish last and we'll take our chances in the draft lottery and we'll trade Colton Pareko, who's still there by the way, and Alex Petrangelo, who's a Stanley Cup champion now. What if they had just done that? I don't think it's corny to want better. What do you think Sheldon keeps saying? Ah, you know what, ah, don't worry about it. A professional hockey coach says that, fire them! I'm not saying you gotta be hellfire and brimstone and a jerk about it. I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with pointing out the way you got one point and also, how you could have got two questions. I don't even know what to ask. Oh, Brian, you blew it! Ooh, I like this question. Should Sheldon have switched Samsonov for Murray in this game? Hasn't done it this season, minus one injury game. I know I would have. You know what? I wasn't thinking about it either way. Like, I want him to get pulled or I don't want him to get pulled. But when the fifth goal went in, when it went in, it was in the second period, man. And he hadn't faced a ton of shots. More than Bennington, but not a ton of shots. I was surprised that Keefe didn't pull him. I think it's probably down to a sports science thing. You don't want to tire out Murray when you don't need to. The Leafs, I think, have had pretty good injury luck on the goalie front since the obvious fiasco at the beginning of the season. Samsonov is fighting it right now. He had a really good stretch, and right now he's in a really bad stretch. Leave him in there. Let him find it. Honestly, he kind of found it. Was he good in the shootout? No, he wasn't good in the shootout. But, uh, I mean, Robin Leonard w went through, like, didn't he go through a full year where he didn't win a shootout at all? The shootout is the shootout. There are guys who are great at the shootout and not all that great at outscoring the other team. I think Sheldon and the coaching staff probably had a conversation about it. I think if six or seven go in, I mean, you, don't, you also don't want to sewer the guy's confidence. But Sammy didn't give the team a reason to pull him after five. It's a little victory. Speaking of goalies, this from Kevin Papetti. Adam Gaudet wins it in overtime for the Marlies and caps it off with a great celebration. Joseph Wool improves to seven and oh. Yeah. So remember I said on the injury front, things are looking better. And earlier this season, I said Eric Shelgren is the obvious number three goalie. If the Leafs have to call up a goalie right now, Joseph Wool has not lost a hockey game this season, guys. He's been great. So a guy that was the number three, probably bumped down to number four, and might be the number three again. The Leafs situation? It's all right. Last but not least, this this one, this one, it's, we need to talk about it. You're sitting down for a nice craft dinner with your family. It's the good stuff, not just the normal elbows. You finish straining it and you realize you have no butter or margarine, what do you do? First of all, thank you for this question. I really admire this question. And I also admire that you called out, I assume, the spirals over the elbows. I find the spirals to be far more versatile, and I have found myself in situations where I had to improvise ingredients for craft dinner, and I have found spirals to be more versatile. So, what do you got? You obviously, you, you boil the pasta, right? And then you got the cheesy powder that you put on top. You got milk and you got butter and margarine. But you don't have butter and margarine. So what do you do? Do you just use more milk? It's slap, slap. What are you talking about? That's the matter for you. You don't just use more milk. What are you missing when you do not have the butter or the margarine for your craft dinner? You are missing a creaminess. Okay, so how do you find a creaminess? You're also missing a thickness. So there's a few ways you can go. The first way, and I've tried this, and it's not necessarily my favorite, but it could work, cream. As in like 
coffee cream. Oh, Steve, you think that's- I didn't say I think it's anything. I'm just saying we're out of butter and margarine and I'm using what's in the fridge. You cook it then. See what I mean? You see what I mean? You don't come into my house and tell me how to cook. Coffee cream could work. Now that's not a ton better than milk. It's going to help with the creaminess, not necessarily the thickness. So if you can, what you're going to want to do is melt some shredded cheese on there. So you can use coffee cream, which remember does not taste like coffee, it tastes like cream coffee cream, and a little bit of melted, shredded cheese. Cheddar, marble, doesn't matter. That should work for you. The other, and this is a quick fix, you can just do sour cream. Now, some of you might find that uh, disgusting because sour cream does not quite taste like butter. It tastes like sour butter, which might make you think you're dying. And you're not, it's just sour cream. This is where you can choose to do something else because the sour cream should be good enough. I've done it plenty of times. I liked it, a-okay. If you need to take your mind off of the fact that it's sour cream, what you have to do is turn it into something else. I think hot sauce is what you need for this dish. In order, Cholula, Frank's of any variety, and Tabasco. Steve, can you explain that? No. The final way, and this is gonna be very controversial, again, you still have milk, so you're gonna get a little bit of creaminess in there, but it's gonna be very watery. You need some thickness. Once again, these are desperate times. You are out of butter and or margarine. Barbecue sauce. I am saying barbecue sauce. You are making something else. I'm not saying pour the whole bottle in. I'm saying just a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe, maybe like a like like those McDonald's ketchup cups. Maybe one or two of those full of barbecue sauce. Put that in, and then you stir it in. You got to stir it good. You don't want it all gloppy and it's uneven. Blech, that's disgusting. You got to stir this really well. Mwah. Now beyond that, you can put in whatever you want. A, a little bit of green onion, Mwah. or or a little bit of bacon bits. Mwah. Make it yours, Kraft Dinner. Bless us. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like. If you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends, you don't tell me how to cook into my kitchen!